Well, hello and welcome to another morning of Journeying with Jesus. And uh, we're going to continue uh, in Luke chapter 19. Just before we do, thank you to many of you who have been praying for me as I was at my interview uh, for Church of England Selection earlier in the week. Um, strange process doing it on Zoom, very intense, um, but actually went really well. So um, thank you for your prayers and uh, we'll find out in the next few weeks and how things have gone. Let me pray just before we look at this parable and then we'll spend a few moments in it together. Lord, just help us to uh, hear from you, but also to reflect on uh, a challenging and uh, intriguing little passage. Amen. Well, if you've got a Bible uh, somewhere around page 1053, maybe, uh, you can pick up Luke chapter 19, and we're reading from verse 11. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable that was Jesus, because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minus. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, we don't want this man to be king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he'd given the money in order to find out what they uh, gained with it. The first one said, sir, I have gained. Your uh, miner has become 10 more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in this very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. The second came and said, sir, your miner has earned five more. The master said, you take charge of five more cities. Then another servant came and said, sir, here is your miner. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you're a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, uh, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have at least collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his minor away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minors. Sir, they said, he already has 10. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Um, well, what a, what a one to be given as my uh, little thought for you. And I really would encourage you throughout the day, not just to take a few moments now, but it is a tricky parable. We want to spend a bit longer on it. So maybe come back to it at the end of the day. Have a little think yourself about what you think could be going on. A few things to point you to as you do that and as you reflect. Firstly, Jesus tells this story as he's on the way into Jerusalem. That detail is not to be missed out because the crowds are anticipating that Jesus now will be made king. This is the moment he's going to become the king. So then he tells a parable. And one of the key elements of the parable is that the kingdom of God isn't going to happen straight away. It's not going to come in this moment where he is in front of the crowds in Jerusalem. It's going to be delayed a bit longer. You see that, don't you? Um, he's, he starts the story by saying a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. There's a delay. Um, secondly, we see that within the time that is given, there is responsibility, not for a huge amount. Uh, this is a little different to some of the other parables where large kind of things are given. A minor would have been very small uh, uh, amount of uh, money that was given to each of the servants. But actually, uh, we see that what was entrusted a little is kind of magnified in, in, in a big way. And what's going on there? Well, you might puzzle whether that is faith, is faith to be grown, and um, could be that it's about your kind of output as a, a believer. Is that meant to be expanded? Um, lots of different theories roaming around. I want you guys to have a think. I don't want to just give you nice pat answers this morning, partly because it's tricky and I'm not 100% sure of myself always on exactly what I think. 
Thirdly, we notice that the people, there's a group of people who are very much opposed to this person taking up kingship. And in that, they send word, they try and put it off, but it is inevitable that the king is going to come back. It's inevitable that the king is going to come back. And in fact, not just those who kind of looked busy, but actually there's, there's two kind of categories, aren't there? And we see this so often in the Bible, two categories that people fall into. You've got the first two servants who respond well to what's been entrusted to them. You've got the other servant and you've got the, the kind of haters and they're lumped together. They didn't do well, did they? The, the servant is called out for their wickedness. But more strikingly, at the very end of the parable, what do we see? The enemies are killed off. A king won't allow enemies to be in the kingdom, to be so uh, arrogant and so clearly saying, we don't want this person to be king. So what's going on? Uh, well, tricky, tricky, for sure. I think what we want to say is that there is a delay. Jesus will come back. That in the time between now and Jesus coming back, we should be expectant for uh, taking the most of our opportunities without feeling deeply guilty for everything we've missed. Because we see we're entrusted only with a little bit. We don't have huge responsibilities here. We're just meant to be faithful and walk daily with God. But there's a warning, isn't there, for those that aren't in that category, a warning that we should consider. Well, have I got this interpretation of the parable right? I'm going to keep thinking about it. Maybe you will. I'd encourage you before you go to sleep tonight, come back to the parable, have another read, see what you notice and have a little think. What do you think is going on there? Let me pray and then we will wrap up together. Uh, Lord God, we thank you that Jesus, the king, when he comes, will see our little deeds and call them out as faithful that he will reward us for the little bits of faith that we uh, can show day by day. But Lord, help us and help our world to not be so arrogantly set up against you, the king. A world that is busy and is distracted. Lord, we just pray that you would use your people to point to the truth. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me today and uh, I look forward to seeing where the series continues on as we keep going. Bye for now. Bye.